So let's get started. We're going to start out with a couple of sun salutations. Sun A, toes together, heels slightly apart. Go ahead and let's let's pick let's uh, not get tongue tied. Let's think about this this mountain pose, a tall mountain pose. Pressing down into the feet. Pull those belly buttons to spine. Lengthen down through the tailbone. And go ahead and slightly squeeze the shoulder blades behind you. Get them a little bit closer. Hey, girl, welcome. And then reach the crown of the head up high. We can make another row. Breathe in here. Let's go ahead and start to engage that ujjayi breathing. That's that ocean breath in through the nose, out through the nose. It's you're going to feel your rib cage expanding in all directions. One more breath here. Quit giggling. I see the giggles. You're going to make me giggle this whole class. All right, Surya Namaskar A, Sun A. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Move through your vinyasa. That can be high plank, low plank on your toes or on your knees. Inhaling into upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. Gaze is towards your belly button. Trying to reach those heels to the mat. If they don't reach there today, that's okay. And think about a little weight into your thumb and your pointer finger. Let's do one more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, walk, step, or jump forward. Shoulders back. Next inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Bring the energy up from the ground overhead. Exhale, hands to the side, mountain pose. Beautiful. Let's do that again. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Plant those hands down. If you want, take the knees to the mat. Remember, elbows to your side. Inhale, head up, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Beautiful, guys. This is the quietest Ashtanga class ever. <laughs> Everybody's on their best behavior. Your gaze can be towards your belly button or in between your legs. Now think about getting the shoulders away from the ears. You guys look really tense up here. One more. Inhale, let's look between those hands. Exhale it all out. Come forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Belly stays in. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side. Mountain pose. Let's do that again. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Remember, try to squeeze those elbows into your ribs, pushing yourself up to your upward facing dog. Belly stays in, even here, rolling over those feet, downward facing dog. A couple of more breaths here, just warming up. If you tend to lock your elbows, think about softening your elbows, Hillary and Chloe. <laughs> Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale it all out. Come forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side. Mountain pose. Beautiful. Thank you. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. See if you can get to your chaturanga on the exhale. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. For those of you that have been coming for a while, try getting the thighs off of the mat in your upward facing dog. I'm going to tuck some wires while y'all are in your down dog. One more breath. Inhale, look between those hands to prepare. Exhale, bring them forward. 
Shoulders lift halfway. Inhale and fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side, mountain pose. You guys starting to get warm? Sun B, inhale, chair pose. Sit low, reach high. Remember, belly's in, tailbone's down. Thinking about toes together, heels apart. Maybe they are. One more inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Left heel plants, right foot forward, warrior one. Left toes are facing that front left corner of the mat. Right knee is working towards a 90 degree angle in the front. Bring those left hips forward, left rib cages forward. See if you can inner spiral the pinkies towards each other. Maybe the hands touch overhead. Beautiful alignment, ladies. One more inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhaling into up dog. Exhaling, down dog. Right heel plants, left foot forward. Warrior one on the left. Again, this time right toes forward, right hip forward. Left knee is bending, belly's in, tailbone's down. Bring the right rib cage forward. Nice, one more inhale. And exhale, chaturanga. Remember, low planks in yoga, elbows stay in. Up dog to down dog. Five breaths here. Belly's in. Relax the shoulders. One more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale it all out and come forward. Shoulders back, inhale and fold. Back to your chair on the next inhale. Exhale, mountain pose. Beautiful. Y'all ready to pick up the pace? One movement, one breath. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left heel plants, right foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. If my breath's too fast, go at your pace. Inhaling, up dog. Exhaling, down dog. Right heel plants. Left foot forward, warrior one. Good job, ladies. Chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. Good job. Abene, take your foot and bring your feet up maybe two inches. Is that better or worse for the hammies? All right. If you want, you can. I feel bad. You can practice. Your call. We got an assister. Yay. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale it all out. Come forward. Shoulders back. Inhale and fold. Inhaling back to your chair pose. Exhale, Samasiddhi. Beautiful. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left heel plants, right foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Right heel plants, left foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Five long, slow, deep breaths here. Catch your breath. Who needs a treadmill? We got this. Good job, ladies. Remember, weight into the thumb and the pointer fingers. That's going to give the outer parts of your wrist a little bit of a break. Let's do one more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale it all out. Come forward. Inhaling, shoulders back. 
half lift and fold. Inhaling back to chair pose. Exhale, mountain pose. Beautiful. Now we're coming into Padagustasana, hands to the hips. Inhale, jump your feet, hips width distance apart. That is not mats width distance apart, it's about two fists. With your inhale, head up, exhale, forward fold. Grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. Pull yourself down here on the exhale. Elbows out wide. You should see your biceps working. Let me see the gun show. Even you guys there watching online. Pull yourself down, but pull the shoulders away from the ears and a little bit more weight into the toes. Let the head go. As Deanna says, the head's not invited to this party. Inhale, head up. Exhale, let's slide those hands underneath the feet. Some people call this gorilla pose, padahasasana. Walk those toes all the way up to the wrists. Give them a little massage and then pull yourself down. Again, elbows out wide, but try not to let those shoulders come towards your ears. So still physically forcing those shoulders away from their ears. Force is a little bit of a violent word. Encouraging the shoulders away from the ears. <laughs> One more breath, a little more weight in the toes. Those hamstrings love slash hate you. Inhale, head up, releasing those hands. Exhale, hands to the waist, soften the knees, and then roll yourself up. And then jump the feet together, Samasitihi. We're going to do a medium-sized step to the back of the mat to your triangle pose. So right toes are now facing that dark purple wall. Hips shoot back, hands reach forward. Try to grab your right big toe. That's not happening today. You can bring that right hand up to the shin. Left hand's reaching up high to give the tree wall a high five. Goal is to have that right shoulder stacked on top of that right thigh. Left shoulder stacked on top of that right shoulder. Gaze is towards the left fingertips. Lengthen through the tailbone. One more breath. Soften that right knee. Pull yourself up. Rotate towards the tree wall, rotate towards the other side. Sh hips shoot back, hands come forward. Triangle pose on the left, trikonasana on the left. Remember, we're trying to be between two panes of glass here. If there's a little bit of congestion in the low back, maybe play with angling your right toes forward, a little bit more like warrior one toes. That sometimes create you creates a little bit of space. Belly's in. Soften that left knee. Pull yourself up. Let's rotate towards the back of the mat again. We're skipping that little intermediate sama he. Square the hips off towards that back of the mat. Left hand reaches forward. It's going to set down ultimately on the outside of that right foot. That's not happening today. You can put it on the inside or on a block. Right hand comes up. Palm faces away from the body. Again, eventually, left hand is on the outside of that right foot, fingertips in line with the toes. Gaze is towards those right fingertips. Try to pull the right shoulder away from the right hip a little bit if you can. Good. One more. Soften that right knee. Pull yourself up. Good job, ladies. Y'all look good. Let's do the other side. It's big windmill. Pull that left hip back as you bring the right hip forward. Right hand comes forward. Sets down on the outside of that left foot, maybe. Left hand reaches up high. Good, Chloe. Now think about left shoulder away from the left hip. So see if you can bring that left hip back some, Christy. Yeah, girl. Keep your belly in. These twists are really important, but keep the belly in to save the back. One more breath. Soften that left knee. Come on up. And then big step to the front. Samasitihi. Beautiful. I'm going to go this way, and we're going to come into extended side angle so you all can see my face. So big step to the back of the mat with that right foot. Right knee is bent to a 90-degree angle. Step one, right elbow to that right thigh. Shoot that left hand straight forward to where the wall and the ceiling meet. Ultimate expression, right hand down on the mat on the outside of that right foot. Fingertips in line. Now relax the shoulder away from your ears a little bit. Belly's in as you look at those left fingertips. Draw the belly in, lengthen through that tailbone. One more breath. All right, come on up. Let's do that on the other side. I don't know how I feel about how quiet this is. Bend down into the left knee. Remember, left elbow to that left thigh, shooting that right hand straight from the underarms. Totally acceptable as you build strength in the left thigh. 
Eventually, you'll have that left hand on the mat. Sink into that left knee a little bit more. That'll help you get your hand down lower. And think about belly in and rib cage, right side of the rib cage up closer to the ceiling. Get the shoulders away from the ears a little bit. That means you got to squeeze the rhomboids. Belly's in. All right, come on up. Now we're going to go straight into a revolved extended side angle. So turn back to the front of your mat. Step one, come down to those left knees. Bring your hands to your heart center. Oh, did I say the back of the front? Yeah, you guys are at the back of your mat, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> hands to your heart center. Left elbow to the outside of that right thigh. And maybe you have your hands at your heart center. Step two is you try to come up off of that back knee, and maybe you hang out in this revolve crescent lunge. Step three, you're more like in warrior one feet with left hand on the mat, right hand reaching forward like extended side angle. Now, everybody, try to rotate the right shoulder away from the ear just a little bit. That'll help you look at the right fingertips a little more. See if you can see your own back pocket. Just kidding. All right, one more breath. All right, come on up. Let's do that again on the other side. So we're rotating now towards the front of your mat. Again, you can come down to that back knee. That really helps me to get a stable base. Hands to the heart center, right elbow to the outside of that left thigh. You can stay right here on your back knee, or you can come up to like crescent lunge feet, or you can do like warrior one feet, right heel down. Ultimate expression is right hands down on the mat on the outside of those left foot, feet. Fingertips in line with the toes. Now think about rotating that shoulder away from the ear just a little bit. Getting those hands reaching forward a little bit more. One more. Inhale, come on up. Nice. Exhale, big step to the front. Mountain pose. Whew. All right, so now big step to the back of the mat with your right foot, although I did it with my left. Hands out wide to a T, inhale, exhale, forward fold. Coming into the proseritas. So inhale, halfway lift, getting yourself prepped. Exhale, plant the hands on the mat with fingertips in line with the toes, head on the mat in between the hands. Hashtag goals. This is dependent on your anatomy. So if your head, hands, and toes are all in one line, more power to you. If they're not, that's okay, too. Keep the belly in. Now think about a little bit more weight into the toes. One more breath. Inhale, pressing into the mat to half lift. Exhale, soften the knees, bring your hands to your waist, and then roll yourself up that next inhale. Leave your hands right where they are. Squeeze your waist to see if you can feel your transverse abdominals engaged. Squeeze the elbows together. Head up for that inhale, exhale, forward fold. Maybe the head comes down to the mat in between the feet. If you have really long legs, it's a little bit further than me with my short legs. <laughs> a little bit more weight into the toes. Eventually, your hips are going to be stacked over your ankles. One more breath. Soften the knees. Use your glutes. Those are your big muscles on your butt. And pull yourself up. Don't use your poor little back muscles. Nice. Hands out wide to a T. Inhale. Exhale, clasp them behind your back. Pull them down and away from the ears. And then forward fold. Eventually, the head and the hands hit the mat. If they don't today, that's okay. Next week. <laughs> All right, soften the knees, pull yourself up. Use your glutes, not your back. Nice. <laughs> Giving your friend that little hug there, tap. All right, hands out wide to a T. Football players do it all the time. Yogis can do it. <laughs> and then inhale, head here, up, and then exhale, forward, fold. Grab hold of the big toes with your peace fingers. Pull yourself up, and then pull yourself down. Your ankles should be talking to you. At least mine do. Think about a little bit more weight into the toes. So that's going to shift your hips forward ever so slightly. If we had a camera, you'd be able to see back muscles because you're pulling yourself down so much. Yeah. Football face. Okay. Inhaling, halfway lift, soften the knees. Then bring your hands to the waist to roll yourself up. Good job. Big step to the front of your mat. Mountain pose. 
Yeah. All right. Pyramid pose. Reverse prayer. Fingertips down or up. And then medium sized step to the back of the mat. Try to square your hips off to the back of the mat. Belly stays in. Tailbone comes down. Forward fold over that extended right leg. Soften that right knee. Two more breaths. Think left hip up, right hip down a little bit. One more breath. Soften in that right knee. Pull yourself up. Rotating towards the left, towards the front. Now, if balance is really wonky, eventually we'll have that heel to heel alignment. But Instagram is not here, and neither are the yoga police. So take a wider step if you're feeling wobbly. Pull the left hip back, right hand forward, and then forward fold. Soften that left knee. We tend to lock that left knee. Try to squeeze the elbows together a little more. You'll feel that nice stretch along the front of the shoulders. This is a great antidote to all that computer sitting we do. Soften in the left knee. Pull yourself up. Big step to the mat. Mountain pose. Beautiful. Everybody's favorite time of practice. It's balance time. So... Let's ground down a whole bunch in your left foot. Option number one. Yeah, you can get off your mats. The harder the surface, the easier this is. Option number one, you're going to ground down with that left foot. Use your left hand onto your side. See if you can feel your transverse abdominals engaged. That's secret to balance. All right, bring your left knee up. That's option number one, and that's where we stay. Option number two, try to grab the, the right big toe from the outside of the right knee. That's a little bit of an abs challenge. And then you extend it out, or from the inside. And then option number three is you forward fold over that extended leg. Now try to have the elbow down, shoulders away from the ears. Head up on that inhale. Exhale, let's open up to the side. It's windy in here, those darn fans. Think squeezing the standing butt cheek. That's going to help your balance. Maybe you snap the opposing fingers. And if you're feeling super froggy, you look over towards the left. One more. Let's bring it forward. Maybe we forward fold again. And then come on up. And then five breaths. I'm doing them with you. Slow. And I'm waving at you. One more breath. <laughs> All right, set it down. Oh, those are always the longest breaths, right? <sighs> okay, shake it out. Other side. So remember, make sure that you squeeze the working butt cheek, okay? That's going to help you to balance. And make sure you're feeling the transverse abdominals. Mine like to go away. And that's when I get really wobbly. So plug those toes into the mat. Bring that left knee up. Make sure you feel those abdominal muscles working. And then maybe you grab the left big toe from the outside of the knee. Yeah, ladies. And then extend that left leg out. It's a little bit of abs extra credit. Forward fold. One more. Because it's fun, head up, inhale. Let's open up to the side. Wowzers. Maybe you gaze to the side. Now sometimes it makes it a little easier to have the heel in, toes pointing out. Squeeze the butt cheeks. Were we allowed to say that on Facebook? I hope so. All right, let's come together. And then forward fold. Head up here on the inhale. And then let it go for five of the longest breaths ever. Now try not to lean back. Lean into it. Lift it up a little higher. Squeeze that standing butt cheek. <laughs> I need pictures of the faces here. This is awesome. <laughs> One more breath. Nice. Set it down. Oh, hallelujah. <sighs> the angels hear us. Okay. Ground down a lot through that left foot. Options, if you have your half lotus, go for it. If you don't have your half lotus, maybe you work on your figure four. Right foot crossing over the left, just above the knee. 
And that might be right where you hang. Let me see if I can do this without wobbling. And if you want, you can forward fold over this crossed right leg. You're going to feel a nice stretch through the out par outer part of your right butt cheek. Now, if you're going for the full posture, this Arda Bada, you bring that right heel all the way up to your belly button. Set it down. Right hand wraps around behind, and maybe it grabs the right big toe. If that's not happening today, you can grab that left elbow, and you can still forward fold. Oops, I'm pulling my mic off. Eventually, you have the toes, and the left hands are on the mat, behind or beside, rather, the left foot. One more breath. All right, soften that left knee, and then pull yourself up slower than what I just did. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, let's do that on the other side. Whew, crossing that left foot over the right, figure four maybe, and we're working to open up the outer part of the, uh, the glute. That's your piriformis, among other things. So if you've got your half lotus, work your half lotus. Maybe you grab the right elbow. Maybe you can grab the left toe and forward fold. A little artabata for you. Let the head go. One more. Inhaling head up. And then softening in that right knee to pull yourself up. Use control. That was a little better. Shake it out. Whew, thank goodness we're done. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's all good. Okay, we're going to vinyasa to ukatasana. Next time we'll have live music. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Next inhale, lands you in chair pose. Count starts when the last person's in chair. Utkatasana. So that's count is starting now. Now think about this as your time to work on your alignment. Belly in, tailbones down, thumbs pressing towards the wall behind you. Maybe they your palms can come together. But if they come together, don't let your rib cage jut out. Mine tends to jut out. Let's do one more. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Draw the belly in. I'll meet everybody in downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, left heel plants, right foot comes forward, warrior one. So we've got five breaths here to really work on our alignment. Left hips forward, left rib cage forward. Now again, if the yoga police were here, we'd have the heel to heel alignment. They're not here. So take up space. Be compassionate to that back hip flexor. It also helps make the balance a little bit easier. If you're looking for more of a challenge, make your legs a little longer. But we don't want to lean forward. One more breath. Straighten that right leg. Turn towards the left. Our music went away. Turn, turn towards the back. And then warrior one, Wamabaga, other side. Now remember, belly stays in. Rotate those pinkies towards each other a little bit. Yeah, good job. Maybe your hands come together. Everybody sink a little more in the left leg. One more. All right, opening up, warrior two. So we're looking over the left middle fingers. Left knee is bent a whole bunch. Shoulders are down and away from the ears. Two more. One more. Straightening that left leg. Turn it towards the right. Turn the right toes towards the front. Warrior two. So quiet. Y'all are on your best behavior. <laughs> Do you remember in school when the teacher had was like being graded by the principal? I kind of feel like this is what that is. Okay, windmill those hands down to the mat <laughs> and take your vinyasa.
We're going to look between those hands, walk, step, or jump through to a seated position. And hopefully everybody will still be able to see me. All right, coming into Dandasana, seated staff pose. So hands on either side of the hips. Energy out through the heels. Pressing those hands into the mat. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, five breaths. One more breath. Let's do Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. We're going to do two of the three. So either grab your big toes with your peace fingers and pull yourself down, or thumbs go to the front part of the big toes, hands wrap around the sides of the feet, and try to get your feet flat. In all of them, let your back round naturally and don't look up. Don't do as I'm doing. Pull the shoulders down and away from the ears. One more. So if you're grabbing your toes, grab the outside of your feet. If you're grabbing the outside of the feet, work towards a bind. Doesn't matter which hand's grabbing which hand, although there is a lot of controversy around that. According to Manju, he just says grab a wrist. Pull yourself down. Nice. One more. All right, inhale, come on up. Bring those feet into your chest and work your vinyasa. And if you don't want to do a vinyasa, just do a boat pose. If you want to do ex 15 extra push-ups, go for it. We're going to jump through, back to seated, and work reverse tabletop. So toes, toes together, heels slightly apart, fingertips facing the hips, rotate the shoulders towards you, so forward. Now, inhale, you're going to squeeze the butt cheeks together like it's nobody's business and lift your hips up high. Now, if this is just not happening today, you can have bent knees, feet, hips with distance apart and come up like that. But you guys are all strong, so let's do it for five of the longest breaths like Amy is. That's five. Squeeze the butt cheeks together a little more. Lift up. Four. Lift up a little higher. Push down in the toes. Three. Get a little higher. Two. And last one, come on out. <laughs> Take your vinyasa. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump through to the top of the mat and journey into second series. Woohoo! That was such a rebel. Okay, so this is one of the only poses where we start out going to the left. We're going to come into a tiny little ball squat. Eventually, our heels will be to the floor. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Step one, make some space between your feet, your knees rather, and you're going to bring your right uh, shoulder in between the knees and wrap around the one leg, the right leg looking over towards the left. Step two, you keep your knees together, hands at your heart center, thumbs to your chest. Step three, you wrap around both. Let me see if I can do that. You wrap around both. One more. All right, coming on out of this vinyasa. <sighs> I forgot. We should have probably skipped that one and just kept going. So we'll skip a vinyasa the next time around. All right, so remember, you can open your knees up and bind around the one. You can keep your knees together, hands to your heart center, left elbow to the outside of that right thigh, bring your thumbs back to your chest. Now remember, you can remove your anatomy, like I have to move body parts out of the way. And then step three is you bind around both. You gaze over that right shoulder and you try to breathe. Hashtag try. One more. Oh, hallelujah. Come on out of this. And vinyasa. Which one do we skip? Oh, oh, well, we'll skip the one between the lagus. Oh, wait, we're not doing lagus. Whatever this one is. <laughs> okay, jump through to seated. Okay, options here. We can do the primary series of this pose, which is half hero's pose, two young muka ekpada, and um, half hero's pose, and then you just lean forward over that extended left leg. So right leg comes back. 
If you're falling over towards the left a little bit, shimmy a blanket or a block underneath the left butt cheek. Sometimes if I just remove the flesh from my left butt cheek, it'll get, it'll get me more grounded. So if you're working on hamstring mobility, you can just forward fold over this one. If you've got pretty loose hammies, you bring that left leg. I think I just did this the opposite side first, but whatever. Okay, so we're going to do both sides. That's all that's important. So maybe you work your left leg up, and then eventually your forehead will come to your shin. Just go for it. Go for it. That's awesome. One more breath. All right, let's do the other side. See, there's a, sp a skip vinyasa. In the interest of time, there we go. Rem so I have to, like, get the flesh out of the way for the calf in order to do it. I've got some meaty thighs. And then, again, sometimes rolling stuff out of the way from my butt, that'll also help me to get centered more. Anybody feeling this in the knees? If you feel it in the bent knee, you can put, like, a sock or a shirt on the back of the knees. Now, you can forward fold over that right leg, or you can pull the right leg up. You can bind around that right leg. And again, you're technically supposed to do this side first. Don't tell the Ashtanga Yoga police. <laughs> Good job, guys. Runners do not like this pose. <laughs> I got one shaped head shaking it like, no, they don't. No, they don't. All right, one more. All right, releasing this. Vinyasa. Or boat pose, or you just hang out and wait. From downward facing dog, we're going to come into Shalambhasana, locust pose as I move my mat again, making sure everybody can still see me. So come all the way down to your belly, hands to your side, palms down, although it really doesn't matter. Lengthen through the tailbone. So try not to let the booty stick up. That means it's going to hurt your low back when you do this. So try to bring the pelvis forward like you're trying to put your hoo-ha on the mat. Now lift. Hands stay on the mat. Am I allowed to say that on Facebook? Lift your feet. Lift your head. But you're not bringing your chin up. That just hurts my neck to demonstrate. Lift the legs a little bit more so you think length and up, but channel your inner little mermaid. We're singing, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Go up a little higher. <laughs> One more. Now we're going to bring the hands in line with the chest. This is where she's showing you her snarf blat. Squeeze the elbows together. Mm-hmm. Little to no weight in those fingers. This actually helps improve creativity. I had a chiropractor tell me that. I think I tell you guys that every week. Come on. Posterior chain work. It's good. One more. Plant the hands. Plant the toes. Push yourself up. Downward facing dog. Yeah, who, who loves that pose? <laughs> now we're coming into Bekasana, Ashtanga Crow. So high plank, slow and controlled, low plank. Not crow, Ashtanga Crow, Ashtanga Frog. So option number one, we do it one leg at a time. I'm going to demonstrate with my left side first for the interest of the viewers. So bend that left knee. So when you start out, your left elbow is bending down, right? So rotate your shoulder forward, bring the elbow up. And you'll watch my hand rotate from fingertips back to fingertips forward to push the heel into. Eventually, the heels will be on the mat beside the bottom. All right. You can do that one leg at a time for about five breaths each, or you can do both legs. And then you lift your chest. Now think, if you've got this pain in the low back, back out, shake it out, and then retilt the pelvis down. Re pain in the low back usually means the low belly is not engaged enough at least in this pose. Lift your chest up, Chloe, if you can. You too, Sarah. And pushing those heels down. Try to bring the feet in a little more, Leslie. One more. All right. Come on out of this. Plant the hands beside the nipples. So a little bit further back than you think. Plant the toes into the mat. Lift the quads up off the mat. Just the quads. Now, with everything that engaged, push up. Yeah. Downward pressing dog. Awesome. All right, we're coming into camel pose. So bring the knees to the mat. Knees are about hips width distance apart. So that's about two fists width distance, okay? Not mats width distance. We're going to bring our hands and put them in our yoga pockets. Now, the secret, at least for me to be able to make room for my um, sacrum to move, is to relax the butt cheeks. So copper feel. 
make sure it's still jiggly. We'll keep them as jiggly. <laughs> Maybe they're not as jiggly as mine. So try not to engage as long as possible. The looser this is, the more the sacrum will move, so the, lo the less pressure will be right here in the low back. So elbows in, rotate the shoulders forward, and then you pull, let your head come down last. Now, options are to grab your heels, or maybe the palms of the hands go flat onto the feet. That's never going to happen. You can plug the toes in and reach for the heels a little bit higher up. Or you can stay here in your yoga pockets. Remembering, try to keep the butt cheeks nice and soft. Press the hips forward a little more. One more. Nice. Come on out of this. Take your vinyasa. So if that elicits strong emotions, it's the pose, not me. <laughs> All right, this is where we're going to veer off course just a little bit and do a little bit of hip opening for my hip opener request, but also hip opening before back bends can really help you to improve your back bends. So let's try, if you know pigeon, go for pigeon. If you know Hanumanasana splits, we can do splits. So pigeon, your right knee is bent in the front, left leg is shooting out, but instead of forward folding, push yourself up. That's going to help to lengthen that psoas hip flexor area. If you've got your half, if you've got your splits, work your splits. And again, we're not leaning into the splits. We're trying to stay up to create length on this side. And you can also play with splits prep, forward and back. We're going to be here for about five breaths on each side. So because back bends has to, requires these psoas, which shorten over time. We all sit all day, all day. We sit, and the psoas shortens and shortens. Hip flexors get tighter and tighter, and that makes back bends a little harder. So think about up, 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 up. Has this been five breaths? Anybody else counting? Okay, yeah, all right. So come on out of this. We can skip a vinyasa if you'd like and go straight into your pigeon on the other side. Or you can do your splits. Now, if you've got really easy pigeons or really easy uh, splits, you can work on, I think they call it um, mermaid pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if one side's harder than the other, that's normal. This is my not as pretty side. Honor it and breathe. And then when you guys are practicing this, at, practicing this at home, the other five days of the week, you hold the harder side twice as long. Or even if you just hold it one breath longer, that'll help to create the balance. <sighs> Good job, guys. Keep breathing. Let's do one more. Oh, yowzers. Okay, come on out of this. We're going to vinyasa and go back to our back bends. Now, if you want to skip your vinyasa, you can go for it. Remember, you can also do your vinyasa on your knees, and you can just do chaturanga push-ups. The vinyasas help to keep the fire going. So from here, we're going to go back to our knees. If you want, you can try your camel pose again, ustrasana, or we can work on laguvarasana, yogi's choice. That's the second of the major back bends. So remember, camel pose, we keep these guys soft as long as possible so the sacrum has room to move. All right, and then you play with, you can plug those toes in and reach for the ankles, but remember, hips are forward. Tops of the feet can be in the mat, rotating the shoulders forward, reaching palms to the feet. That's camel. And if you want to journey with me to the Laguvarasana, your hips come back just a little bit more. If you want a fan, you can grab fans. There's fans back there. Okay. And then in ultimately your hands end up in the creases behind your knees and your head goes down to the mat. Keep your hips lifting wherever you are. Nice, Avine. Beautiful. And then push those knees into the mat to pull yourself up. Good, guys. Take your vinyasa. Ooh, I just got a little dizzy. Ole mole. <laughs> From here. <laughs> Did you say corn muffins? Corn muffins, corn muffins would do it to me, too. Okay. <laughs> from here. <laughs> All right. So wha where am I going from here? We Do you all want to play with? Let's go back to primary series. All right. We're going to look between our hands. Jump through. Oh, good. Well, then that counts. Jump through. All right. Well, now we're going to come and do the um, 
Oh my gosh, I just drew a complete blank, blank on this. Holy moly. Okay, so let's do second series twists instead of first series twists because usually they're a little more accessible than first series twists. Marichi Asana D with the uh, um, half lotuses can sometimes be a weeding out pose and we don't want to weed out, so let's do second series poses. We're skipping the legs behind the heads just today. So right foot comes, left foot comes back, right foot crosses over. I always skip over my sides. And then right foot comes over your left. So we're kind of in a, a half heroes meets lotus pose. So we can stay right here, or you can journey with me a little further. Take that right hand, internally rotate the shoulder to try to grab the right foot behind you. Yeah. All right, left hand. It's going to go up and underneath the right knee. Palm eventually will be flat on the mat. So the left hand crosses the body, and then your gaze goes over the right shoulders. Now think about length through the spine. So it's almost like you're trying to push the left hip down a little bit. Yeah, I did. Twist, man. Twist, do it. All right, let's do that on the other side. All right. So this time, right foot's back, removing the flesh of the calf. Yeah, it's hard to talk in those deep twists. Whew. And then half lotus pose on the left leg. Now, if you notice, like I end up starting out like really wide. I try to bring myself a little closer. It'll make that twist a little easier. Internally rotating the shoulder will help you get a little bit more reach behind you. And I have long arms and torso and short legs. So right hand's going to cross the body and come fingertips facing the, the, the body, the, the palms flat on the mat. Jennifer's having trouble with words. And then gazes over those left shoulders. One more. It's hard to talk and twist. All right, come on out of this and take your vinyasa. Oh, yeah, that was a good twist. <laughs> Remember, twists are great at detoxing the body, a.k.a. helping you to eliminate, which I probably shouldn't have said on this, <laughs> but whatever. I love to talk about poop. Let's just be honest, you okay? <laughs> okay, so let's bring that left foot into the outer part of your right butt cheek. So it's, it's like you're doing a half lotus, but you're not bringing your foot up over the thigh. It's under the thigh, like easy seat. Then cross that right foot over the left. Okay, so this is, usu this is a great pose to do if you're struggling with Marichi D. Remember, yoga was created by men. He didn't, they don't have the same anatomy that we do. So get the ladies out of the way. We're going to be twisting into that knee. So again, if you have to, I pick stuff up and move it out of the way. So I'm getting my left elbow to the outside of that right knee. Now, eventually, right knee, left underarm, they're going to be kind of touching. Left hand's going to shoot straight out and try to grab the right toes, the right big toes, and stomp your fingers. Right hand, you're going to internally rotate that right shoulder, reach it behind you, and try to grab your left inner thigh. So when you do this, don't let the foot stop pounding on the, the right foot still pressing down on the left hand. That's really hard, left and right. And then right hand's grabbing the left inner thigh, gazes over the right shoulders, maybe even out the right corner of your eyes. And if you can think of anything else, try to put the right butt cheek down a little more. You're twisting. You're, you're good. You're good. All right, come on out of this. Let's do the other side. Okay, so again, so right heel to the outside of the left butt cheek. Left foot stomps down onto the mat. Now, if you ate bean burritos or if you have anatomy, get it out of the way. Like, you can lean back, get it away, whatever you need to do, because you want to get that left knee to the outside of the right shoulder. And then maybe you give it a little tug. When you're feeling pretty loosey-goosey, right hand goes up and underneath the left foot. Man, this is hard to talk. And then internally rotate that left shoulder and reach those left hands for the right inner thigh. Gazes over the left shoulder. 
If you can, think left hip down. That will intensify that twist. Yep. One more. Nice. All right, releasing this one. Ooh, take your vinyasa. That's awesome. Good job, guys. Now that we've got twists in, let's do boat poses. We have one person excited about Navasana, so jump through to seated. That's all I need is one, and then, uh, then my day is complete. Okay, for Navasana, things to think about with Navasana, especially postpartum, maybe um, you can do a couple of things. You can kind of hang out here, but if you feel pressure going down, I would actually come out and either do plank or maybe you can play with leg lifts, okay? Just be real careful because the pelvic floor is weak, and this can actually kind of push down on the pelvic floor. So option number one, feet are planted into the mat. Mm, somewhere, I didn't do geometry that well. It was like 25 years ago, so we got around a 90-ish degree angle. Hands out wide here. Now, if you're building up strength to be able to bring both one or both feet off the mat, you can play with like a 45 to 60 degree angle movement. Just that's building up strength in the transverse abdominals. Then the next step is you pick up one foot, maybe you pick up two feet, eventually you'll be straight for five, four. Now what we're not doing is rounding. So Thor is watching. I don't know who Thor's real name is. <sighs> what was it? Yeah, he's here. Our chest is proud and we're all smiling and happy to be doing boat pose. All right, cross that right foot over the left, squeeze the knees into the chest. That's kind of the secret to be able to lift the butt cheeks up. Press the hands down, lift up, set down. Let's do that two more times. Unwind. We can stay here, 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 or here for five. What we are not doing is rounding. Rounding's really bad. Chest is proud. Now we have Aquaman joining us. <laughs> so we all sat up a little bit more. <laughs> Keep breathing. One more. Cross that left foot over the right. Bring the knees into the chest. That's going to help you to lift. Keep those knees into the chest. If you push down, lift up. Holy mother. Let's do that one more time. Last one's best one, right? What's that look for? <laughs> so remember, you can have bent legs. <sighs> oh, that's so sweet. Ooh, keep thinking happy thoughts. One more. Harder side on top. <laughs> we got some rowboats in the back. Squeeze the knees in. See how tight you can get them with your feet off the mat. Now try to let go of the knees, but hold them up there with your belly. Nice. Now with your knees that tight, press it to the mat. Lift up. And then set it down. Take your vinyasa. Hallelujah. Do you all want to play with uh, shoulder pressing pose, Bhuja Padasana? Okay, we got one person that said yes. All I need is one. Okay, so from your downward facing dog, you're going to froggy jump forward to Malasana squat. Knee <laughs> knees to the inner thighs, thumbs to your chest. All right, so if we're working on hip opening, because you got to have some pretty open hips to make this posture work, just hang out here. But you guys all look pretty open. You can open up your feet a little wider to get your heels down. If your heels are up, open up your feet wider. They could be like mats with distance apart. And be thankful that we don't eat our dinners this way. Right? Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> you do? Okay, so next thing we do is I'm going to scoot myself back. We're going to lift the bottoms up in the air and bring our hands to the outsides of the heels, thumbs on the inside, hands on the outside, and then sit your bottom down on your triceps. Yep, so this might be where we stay because this is opening up the heels a little more. If you've got some juice, maybe you shimmy your heels closer together and cross one on top of the other, and maybe the feet come up off of the mat. Nice, Stephanie. And then from here, you think head forward, head forward, and you bring your head to the mat, and you bring your feet through your hands, maybe the feet never touch the mat. And this is where you hang out for like 5 to 20 breaths, maybe even 30. And then you think about head up, maybe the feet never touch the mat. <laughs> nice. Maybe you play with your titibasana, legs straight out. And then maybe you transition through crow 
to your vinyasa, which I can't do because there's a wall behind me. And I'll meet everybody in Downward Facing Dog. Let's see it, Amy. Let's see it, Amy. So good, so close. Nice, Stephanie. Good. Now bend one foot, then the other, Hillary. That makes it a little easier. Yep, get the booty up. Yep. Nice. Okay, so you think about bending. I do one foot, then the other, and then shoot back. Because that's how you can kind of get those. Eventually, we'll do it with straight legs. In case anybody wanted to see that. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Thank God. Let's do, <laughs> we're going to come into Kramasana. So, oh goodness. These will be the last two poses we do in the interest of time. So, go ahead and assume the position. <laughs> we know what position it is. Okay. So, with Kramasana, it uh, requires open hammies and open hips. So you can hang out right here, just work in your hips to be open. You're going to slide your hands through the knees, holes in between your, underneath your knees. Eventually, the forehead will be on the mat. The hands will be kind of on the outside of the mat. And then if you can, you play with lifting your heels. Lifting your heels is not necessary. <laughs> nice. So Leslie, try to have your legs out straight for Kormasana. You're trying to do Supta Kormasana. So legs out straight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hillary's asleep in turtle pose. So if you can get your forehead down, really try to play with picking up your heels. Okay. From here, for those of you that really want to play with this, and I don't know how if I can talk myself through this. I've never tried to talk and actually do this pose. So the next step is Sukta Kramasana, and what happens is your feet come together and technically bind in front of your head. Some people say on the back of your neck, and Manju does not teach that. He always says you bind in front of your head, and then you bind your hands around your hips, which I am not warm enough to do today. Let's see. Did you all hear that shoulder pop? All right, so eventually your feet bind here. And your hands bind here. Hashtag goals, right? Go for it. Look, Hillary's got it. Yeah, Leslie, try to get one foot on top of the other. That's hashtag goals, right? And you transition out of this the exact same way we did with Bhujapadasana. So you go Titibasana, crow, jump back. Or next week. <laughs> <laughs> or next week. It's, al it's also really fun when somebody's there and they lift you up and your feet are bound behind your head. Yep. P think forward, forward, lift, booty up. Yeah. One leg. Yep. Other leg. Do it, do it, do it. Yes. Jump back, jump back. Yeah. Bravo. And now everybody's in downward facing dog. Take a vinyasa or not. That was awesome. Now we're going to start the closing series. So... Three back bends, yogi's choice. That can be bridges or wheels. If you're working on your drop backs, maybe you go up to the wall and drop back from the wall. I'll demonstrate a bridge, I'll demonstrate a wheel, and if I got it in me, I'll demonstrate a drop back. All right, so feet, hips width distance apart, no matter what you're doing. And all of these, tailbones down, bellies in, and then you're going to channel your inner Jane Fonda, as you lift the hips up, chin stays up high. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy those close shoulders closer together. Clasp the hands under your back and lift those hips. Chest to chin, not chin to chest. Now, if you feel pretty good in this bridge pose, holding it for five breaths or more, try to squeeze your knees together. You come down for a breath, beautiful Amy, and then come up to your back bend, your, oh, uh, Urdhva Dhanurasana. I had a... I had a brain fart right there. So channel your inner third grade, kindergarten, kindergarten to third grade recess and push yourself up. If you've been coming for a while, play with the idea of holding the elbows in together. That's going to, as you push yourself up, that's going to build strength and mobility. Keep breathing. Good job, guys. Soon you'll love backbends or at least tolerate them. And then you come out of this. We got one more. Anybody want to try to drop back? Come on, Amy. 
Oh, we got one taker. That's all it takes. Very good. Did you pull yourself up? Nice. Remember five breaths in your back bends, one breath break. <sighs> if you're working on your drop back, let me think about talking through drop backs. Um, you again, think about booties are relaxed as possible, hips stay forward as possible. Oftentimes people just start out. I had two bolsters beneath my head because I was scared to death to do this um, for the longest time. You can start out with your hands here, that's a little bit harder, or you can start out with your hands at your heart center, that's a little bit less weight than your hands up high. If you start out with your hands at your heart center, hopefully that can help you to push your hips forward, push them forward, push them forward, and then you drop back, just like that, right? No, I'm just kidding. And then in order to pull yourself up, that was the hardest thing for me to learn at least, is you think stomp down a lot with your big toes and come up. Everybody next week. Forward fold, all of you guys, if you're done with your three back bends. Technically, it's a Pashimottanasana. You got it. I got gotcha. you. Nice. Pashimottanasana is a seated forward fold. Okay. <laughs> this is a great counter pose to all those back bends. Believe it or not, you'll get to the point where back bends feel awesome. But it takes a lot of strength along those muscles in your back, those multifidus muscles, along with other muscles. For me, it was multifidi. When you are done, take your vinyasa or not <laughs> and come into your shoulder stand. Technically, that's a chakrasana there, but whatevs. Actually, no, that was a push-up because we were in forward fold. After your back bends, that's a chakrasana. So shoulder stand. If you're new to this, you can just do legs at the wall. If you love shoulder stands, go for it. There's technically two, three, five poses in this part of the closing sequence, starting with shoulder stand. Try to shimmy, shimmy, shimmy your shoulders closer together. You can do legs at the wall. Legs at the wall, it's awesome. You shimmy your bottom all the way up to the wall and you just bring your feet up the wall. And that's actually a really great way to practice shoulder stand. So you plug your feet into the wall and you lift the hips up. Now remember with shoulder stand, you keep your chin up. So if I came around, I'd still be able to get fingers underneath your neck. I was in a class once, yeah, I've told y'all that, where my teacher was having us hold it for 60 seconds. Holy moly. I was not a fan of that. So after your 8 to 10 breaths, you'll come into plow pose. That's where you let your toes come down to the mat, past your head, and then maybe you play with the tops of your feet into the mat, past your head. Remember, chin up. I'm not sure if I could do deaf man's pose with a microphone. Deaf man's pose is where you bring your knees to your ears. And then eventually the knees will touch the mat beside your head. <sighs> and you hold that one, again, for about 8 to 10 breaths. And then after that, you come back to your shoulder stand just to prepare. And then you work your lotus, upward facing lotus. And so once you've got your lotus, you bring your hands to the front part of your knees and you use your abs to hold you up. And then once you've got that, you bring those knees, that lotus knees into your, towards your face. I'm not sure if I can do this with a microphone. And you bind around the lotus. Bindasana. And you hold that for five breaths. I'm going to come out of it so the people online are not hearing me breathe heavily. <laughs> then you slowly roll out of this. Technically, you roll out of this in your lotus. And you do your fish pose holding on to your lotus. So you'd roll out in your fish pose, slide the head up, the top of the head onto the mat, holding on to your lotus pose, countering that shoulder stand.
and then you would do kind of like boat pose with fish pose mixed together. Hands pointing towards the toes. The toes are somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees. Or you're just hanging out, just watching me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, you technically chakrasana or not. That's that back roll to a push-up. And then you do your headstand. So if you've got your headstand, practice it in the front of the mat. If you don't have a headstand or if you can't keep your weight off the top of your head, instead of focusing on getting those feet up off the mat, maybe you play with the idea of getting just raising and lowering your, what would this be? Raising and lowering your head off the mat using your upper body strength. So these would be your traps and your rhomboids. You just play with raising, nice, I have an A. Raising and lowering because that's going to build some strength. And then you do the same thing in downward facing dog. And then when that gets to the point where it's easy, you play with your supported headstand. And I'm really nervous about doing that. Yeah, with the camera on me? Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Nice. So technically, you can hold this. Good, Christy. So get your shoulders more involved instead of just the, can you get your shoulders relaxed and lower? And then feel your lats pushing it too? So that, good, Chloe. You can also do um, downward facing, do not downward facing, um, what is this, dolphin push-ups. That'll also help you to build strength because eventually you'll be able to do this pose with no weight into your head. And then you play with downward facing dog supported headstand, and then you just walk the toes up. You bring one knee in, then the other knee in, and then maybe you play with your little egg here. And then once you're pretty comfortable with egg, that's when you start to raise it all the way up. And then that's where you hang out here forever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then once you're feeling pretty comfortable in it, that's when you start to play with um, piking down. I almost lost it there. And child's pose. Piking down, uh, be just be careful with piking down because at least for me, I tend to dump in the head a little more when I'm piking down because my belly wasn't strong enough at first. So if you start to dump in the head back out, Getting the belly engaged and then try it again. Always do a child's pose after your headstand. When you're ready to come out of your child's pose, you vinyasa or skip it. I need everybody in a seated position. So work on your lotus pose, Padmasana. In yoga, you do your right foot first and the left foot's on top. But if you're doing this every day and you want to mix it up, go for it. Be a rebel. And if this is just not happening, totally okay to do half lotus. That's all right. That's the point of this one. We're going to spend maybe, you think we can do five breaths, seated here, comfortably breathing. Left hand on top of right, palms up. Or you can do hands out here with some chin mudra, yogi's choice. Think about belly in, chest is proud. Good job. Your eyes can be closed. There's technically some breathing and other stuff we can do, but in the interest of time, we'll go ahead, cross those fingers together, bring them up, flip them overhead because it feels delightful. And if anybody's up for it, maybe you don't have to. In fact, yeah, you don't have to at all, but if you want to lift your lotus, you can go for it and see how long you can lift your lotus. 
or you can take your vinyasa and you can do your vinyasa through Mayurasana, which is that peacock pose. What do you guys want to do? Now we're like, I don't know. Let's try to lift your lotus. Just see. Bring those knees up. Up, 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 up. And think about chin up. Now, if you're even if you're in half lotus, that's okay. Just lift up the, the top leg. Come up. For five. Lift the bottom up a little more. Four. Cheat a little bit. Kick those hands into the arms. Three. Two. Nice one. Come on down. All right. For those of you that want to journey with me through the peacock modification, you bring your hands sort of backwards. They might start out forwards. They're going to start out this way, and then you're going to move them backwards like that. It's all about um, wrist mobility. And you come up to the tops of the knees. Now, remember, yoga was created by men. So if you have anatomy, you're going to have to get it out of the way and bring your elbows. Eventually, it'll be to your belly button. But if you've got anatomy, then it can be wider. You lean into your hands, look forward, lift, and go. Try it. Yeah! Basically, face plant. Nice! Good job, guys. I've face planted so many times on that. Let's see it, Chloe. Yeah! Nice! Good job, guys. Take your vinyasa and then go to your shavasana. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody online. We're going to take our shavasana now. At least go for at least 60 seconds. Technically, they say you can... You should go as long as seven minutes. But in the interest of time, and I know that it's not fun to watch somebody else do Shavasana. Thanks for watching us. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you next time.